Father, we thank you for the songs that have been sung. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you for worshiping you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that we will fall upon the good soil of our hearts, that we will grow thereby, and that you will be glorified in all things. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so I hope everybody enjoyed Clive and Ian. Uh, since we were visiting last week's at the renovation, that was first the first Sunday of Advent and the second Sunday, which is today Advent list. So if you want to hear the rest, you got to come on the third and fourth Sundays uh, to hear the rest. Also, we actually also post this on our Facebook page 12 days out from Christmas, but we only do one a day at that time, just give people some additional information so they can get an understanding of what this is all about. Well, with all that said, guess what? We are now into our second episode of our series called Advent. And it is a great time for us to talk about this because Advent is about this time, is about this season. We talked about last week how the word Advent means coming. And it was celebrated to remind everyone about Jesus coming the first time and to also remind us that he's coming back again. And so on this Advent message today, the subtitle is Peace. Um, when we first look at this, we know that when Jesus comes back, he will bring a peace on earth like none other. However, as we await his return, we should constantly seek ways to bring peace to the world around us. So last week again, we talked about our first episode, we talked about hope. And as I said already, today we're going to be talking about episode two, which is peace. Let's look at our definitions for this week. Our definitions for this time are, number one, Advent. Advent is a coming. It is intended as a season of devotion with reference to the coming of Christ in the flesh and his second coming to judge the world. Our second, our second definition is peace. And in a general sense, peace is a state of quiet or tranquility, freedom from disturbance or agitation. <coughs> it's applicable to society, to individuals, or to the temper of the mind. And then there's another word for peace that I wanted us to uh, defined today, which is called shalom. Shalom is a Hebrew word meaning peace, but not only peace, but harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility, and can be used idiodynamically to mean both hello and goodbye. Shalom. So as we get ready to look at these, this thing today, I know there are some mothers that look for peace throughout the day, especially when they have the little children. And they sometimes will run into the bathroom. I remember a commercial where the mom is sitting in the bathroom in the bathtub and she's got the suds and everything going on and the kids come knocking on the door and she goes and she goes and she changes her voice so it's real low so it sounds like her husband and the kids run off so that she can have her time of peace while she was eating her cookies in the bathtub. Some people use the bathroom as their place of peace. They run in the bathroom and stay in there for hours, making you think they maybe have some type of intestinal issues, but no, they just needed some peace. 
separation from agitation, separation from anxiety, just separate. I just need some tranquility. Some of us, uh, when we get upset, like to go on a long drive just to look around so that we can have peace. Some of us like to go on walks, runs. We do something, we kind of separate ourselves from what is agitating us in order to find peace. So that would almost make me say that peace is something that we're always striving for, something that we're always looking for, something that we always desire because it makes us feel at rest. So let's look at Isaiah, the 11th chapter. We're going to start at that first verse. And it says this, English Standard Version, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze and the young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Let's bounce over to James, the fifth chapter. James, the fifth chapter. And it says, starting at the seventh verse, James 5 and 7, English Standard Version. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spake in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain stand fast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will rest upon our hearts and our minds and our spirits that we will grow thereby. Amen. We said all that to say this, is that peace is something that we're all searching for. We're always searching for peace on some type of level. We're always striving for peace. There is uh, something that just ran through my head is, some of us say, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind, but that's not the peace we're talking about. It's actually spelled differently, but, you know, us country folks, we kind of say stuff that sounds the same anyhow. But the peace that we're talking about is that tranquility, that separation from agitation, the, 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 the stoppage of all hostility, so that everything is calm and at rest. Because that is our desire. Our desire is to find peace. But you know the one thing about it, though, the one thing about this, peace don't last long because folks is always getting in my, I mean, getting in people's business. (laughs) 
just when you got everything set up, you, 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 you know, you, you got your hammock all laid out and, and the nice breeze is going and, and you lay down and then every, next thing you know, somebody comes and interrupts your moment of peace. So what we want to do is we want to always move in a direction in which we are not only seeking peace for ourselves, but wanting to provide peace to those around us. I'm finna say some stuff. I, if you look straight ahead, won't nobody know I'm talking to you. Sometimes we get agitated, and so we agitate everybody around us because there's an old saying that says misery loves company which means if I'm going to be miserable all y'all going to be miserable with me that is totally contradictory to what God desires for us he wants us to be peacemakers he wants us to come in and provide peace for those that we are involved in we have to think about when Jesus came, the world was in turmoil. The people were in a, a panic because they were under the Roman rule and they were just wondering when was Messiah coming? When was he going to rescue us from the Roman rule? When is he going to deliver us from this pain, this agony, uh, agony, agony and anguish that we're going through because of the Romans? But when Jesus came, he didn't do it the way that they wanted to do it. He brought a peace that passed their ability to comprehend. Because his peace was not of this earth. His peace was of heaven. His peace was that inner peace that in the midst of all things going crazy around them, he was still able to have rest and separate himself from the agitation and the turmoil, and be tranquil within himself. And we see that the peace of Jesus, that through the scriptures that we just looked at, the, G, the peace that Jesus is bringing is a peace that passes all of what we think is natural. We saw where the lion and the lamb was sitting there chilling out. Can you imagine a, 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 a bear and a cow sitting out in the, in the field eating, eating grass together? Y'all ain't catching that. Eating grass together. Not eating each other, but eating grass together. This type of peace, this type of environment is that everything is in unity. Everything is in harmony and everything is well. You got little kids walking around sticking their hand in snake holes and pulling it out playing with the snakes. Now, I know some of y'all like, I ain't messing with no snakes. But I'm just trying to tell you, it was just so peaceful. Everything was in harmony. Everything was in unity. Everything was well. There was no fear. There was no hatred. All of that was gone because God decided that he was going to manifest his peace in the earth. <laughs> and so James says, y'all just be patient. Be patient. The Lord is coming. But don't you start getting no angst and no, start, no craziness with your brothers. Be cool, relax, be tranquil. Sometimes, again, we allow ourselves to become agitated by something that really wasn't an agitation. Somebody asked you a question, and it could be the third time they asked you, and you, and you kind of say it, I done told you two other times to yourself, and, and, and then you start answering them all snippy. Snippy a good word. You know, start answering them snippy and short. And then, what do they do? They reply with, I'm just asking you a question. And now both of y'all agitated. And so then there's the loss of peace. I have heard of, I have not experienced it, but I have heard of family members that have not talked to each other for years. And when they finally get together, they can't even remember why they was not talking in the first place. See, that don't, that don't make sense to me. Because if we have something that has caused us to be this upset with each other, I'm the kind, I'm going to keep remembering. Now, you might have forgotten, and, 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 but I can tell you what it is. 
But I'm not going to say it because we're trying to maintain peace. And see, that's actually, uh, see, I'm just trying to show you something. And that's actually the setup. Because the person will be like, no, you can tell me. And then when they tell you, then both of y'all back mad and not speaking again. Because we are not seeking to uh, have a mindset that is above that little thing that is agitating us. If our goal is to reflect Christ in the earth, if our goal is to live a peaceful life before all men, if our goal is to reflect the peace of God to people so that they know that they can have rest in him, then the things that affect them should not have the same effect on us. Why? Because we know in whom we live, in whom we move, in whom we have our very existence. Because we know that he has victory over whatever could be in agitation. Now, I know everybody's agreeing, yes, Jesus does. Jesus can and Jesus will. But this is the problem. Sometimes Jesus doesn't show up at the time I believe he should show up so that I can not be agitated. Why can't he have my wife be quiet? Why can't he have my husband just shut his mouth? Why can't the kids just go to sleep like I told them 30 minutes ago? Why are people agitating me? But I want to give you a little mindset change. Why don't we say, I have peace in this situation. Amen. It's not going to upset me. I'm resting in Jesus. Now you take your butt to bed before a fire fall. But no. Let me tell you a technique that children use. I'm going to tell you the technique that children use. They will, they will bother you enough so that you get upset enough, so that you get upset enough and want them to leave you alone so then they don't have to do what it is you told them to do. That's what they do. Amen. All right? I'm telling you from experience. I ain't telling you from something I read. I just know that if I could just agitate my mama just enough that not to get into, into the whooping range, but just be like, why you keep bothering me about this? That pretty soon she'd be like, go on somewhere, and I will go somewhere. I wouldn't ask again, I'd take off. So what we have to realize is that there is some things that are working in the undercurrent that is trying to take away our peace. So we sitting there, and you sit, you sitting there, you look at the television, and you all into the show, and somebody keep bothering you, and you just like, just leave me alone. Go do, go do something. I'm trying to watch my show, and they go and pull, pull a cabinet off the wall, and you were like, why would you pull a cabinet off the wall? And they said, well, you told I was asking, could I climb up there and get that, get the, get that stuff? And you said, just go. See, when you walk in peace, you're cognizant to what's going on. And you're listening and you're not engaging your emotion in order for you to hear what's going on. So what we have to do is we have to look at how people try to take away our peace. And as we're looking at how people are trying to take our peace away, when they realize that they can't take it away, guess what? Then they want to have it. They want to have the peace that you have. You know, I said something to you two weeks ago, and it didn't even bother you. How? How you do that? You, it was only Jesus, because I wanted to choke you to death. But it was only Jesus kept you that day. I was already mad, and I was just working through something, and Jesus kept me. Well, I need Jesus like you need. Yes, you do, because I was going to choke you, choke you out. So what we want to do is we want to be a reflection of the kingdom of heaven on earth. We want to make people see God's kingdom on earth. And how do they see it? They see it as looking at us. When Jesus came, Jesus did it like this. He was who he was. And when he spoke, he spoke to the situation and not to the feeling. He spoke out of authority that comes from heaven and so he could always have peace in every situation. A little story goes through my mind. Jesus was tired after getting, getting done preaching and they were riding on this boat going across and Jesus was laying back there taking a nap and the disciples was getting 
going in, all of a sudden the sea and everything start acting up and they say, oh Lord, we're going to drown, we're going to drown, we're going to drown. They go up there and they slap Jesus and say, Jesus, wake up. We finna drown. We gonna die, Jesus. Jesus gives up, wipes this, you know, he's tired, so he's wiping his eyes. He walks up there, he walks up to the bow of the boat, and he looks around, and he says, peace, be still. And he go back and lay down. And them jokers said, what manner of man is this? Instead of them saying, how you do that, Jesus? They just bewildered that he was able to do it. And what we have to realize is that when Jesus is on our side, when we call on him and he shows up, he's not only doing what we ask, but he's also showing us what to do. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't catch that. Y'all, you know what, when you get ready to go to sleep tonight, you'll, you'll realize what I just told you. That he not only does what we ask, but he's also showing us what to do. When stuff is coming up at you, when things are going crazy, when it's all going all, uh, peace, be still. Sometimes you got to say that to your own self. You got to say that to your own emotions. You got to say that to your own thoughts. You got to, peace, we're not having this. Be still. Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and tell yourself, peace, be still. Sometimes, you say it under your breath, you look at your spouse, peace, be still. Yeah, yeah don't say it too loud, because then they'll be like, what? You trying to talk the word on me? Okay, I ain't trying to start no, I ain't trying to start no stuff. But we have to have that mindset that we are always tr- uh, doing our best to walk in peace. That we're separating ourselves from agitation, that we're... Sp- Living in a tranquil uh, mindset so that we can move on to that other word of peace that I was talking to you about. There is a level of peace that is above what we think peace is. And that is shalom. Again, as we said in our definitions, the word shalom is above. It has peace in it. But it takes peace to a whole nother level because it's not only talking about peace, which we said before, is to be separated from agitation, to be uh, separated from disturbance, but it takes you to a place of harmony. So when we were talking about the animals, when we were looking at how a child could stick his hand in a snake hole and pull a snake out and play with the snake, as we can see the bear and the, and, and, and the cub, and we can see the lion, the lion eating, eating, uh, eating hay, eating straw, when we can see that there's a, there's a harmony that's going on, it's above peace. Shalom has this connotation that you're complete, that you're whole, that you're prosperous. That you are uh, walking in a tranquility that is above anything that can try to upset you. So when Jesus comes back, we're using the word peace, but what Jesus is bringing back is shalom. Shalom is the greeting as well as the farewell. Shalom covers all aspects. Shalom means I have peace, harmony, tranquility, all that wrapped up together at another level, and this is how I live. When Jesus came the first time, he brought peace. The second time he comes back, he's bringing shalom, which is that outstanding peace, that is a complete peace. He was, uh, it tells us in Isaiah how he, God's coming this time, He's going to come and he's going he gonna to bring some heat. He's going to fight. He's going to bring some pain to those that are against the peace that he wants to bring to us. Because how it would be very weird for us to say Jesus is coming back to make war so we can have peace. But, but see what he's bringing, he's bringing a peace that is above all other pieces. He is bringing a peace that causes us to operate in harmony. Most of the peace that we have today is 
You just, I don't want to fight you because you're going to beat me. I don't want to argue with you because you're going to out-argue me. We're just, we're just kind of stepping back. We're making peace that way. But he's going to bring about harmony. He's going to bring about tranquility. He's going to remove all agitation. He's going to remove all disturbance. He's going to make it so that everything is well and everyone. We're going to, I was just thinking about it this morning when I was thinking about some, some illustrations. He's going to make the left wing and the right wing come together. And if you take a, if you, I was thinking about a bird. If a bird was to put its wings together, then it would make a complete circle so everything would be well. You know, he's going to make it so that there's no craziness, no bitterness, no hurt, no harm. It's going to be well with everyone. So that is what we are in transitioning to in this second part of the advent where we're seeking the second return of him. We are seeking for him to come back to bring shalom, peace. And guess what? Next week we're going to talk about the other part, the other side of this. Because once you have peace, then you can operate in joy. So with that said, I'm just going to tell y'all, you better come back next week so you can get the other part of this. I like them teasers. Yes, sir. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot really find peace. You can get a semblance of peace in that you can cause things around you to not be at odds with you. But the peace that you need is the peace that can only be found in Jesus. And you need to establish a relationship with him in order to find that peace, the internal peace that we need. We all know that there is something in us that acquires, that, that desires to have peace. And Jesus can provide you with the peace that you need. The process is not complicated. The Bible says it like this. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The Bible also says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. So it's not a complex operation where you have to do a lot of things. It's just that you have to acknowledge who Jesus is, accept what he's done for you, which is he has rescued you from the penalty of sin because the penalty of sin is death. The Bible says but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he has a gift for you that will give you the peace that you internally desire to have. And so when you make this decision, he immediately comes in and begins the peace process in your life. Now, I'm not telling you that when you accept Jesus, everything becomes uh, uh, perfect. No, that ain't, no, that ain't how this thing works. Because there's a world that we're dealing with that we have to overcome. But he gives us the ability to overcome Amen. the world. So if you have not accepted him, I challenge you today to Make that declaration to accept Jesus in your life. And if you have accepted that challenge, I want to let you know that we are available to assist you by contacting us through info at godshousecc.com. That's info at godshousecc.com. And we will provide you assistance along this journey to help you to become all that God has for you. Because I say this every week. This is not an individual event. This is a team event. We are here to assist you into becoming all that God has for you to be. So let us know at info at godshousecc.com and we will come alongside you to assist you. Well, friends and family, that's episode number two in the books. We're on a, a series called Advent. Today was about peace. We want you to have a peace of mind and not be trying to give out a peace of mind. All right? God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.